In this session, we're going to review the BIM360 team interface. When we first open the interface, we can see the name of the hub here in the upper left corner. It's right after the word team. In this case, my hub is called Engineering Concepts Incorporated. Down below, we can see a listing of projects. Each of these projects represents a cloud-based 24-7 meeting room where people can collaborate on plan sheets and models. With each project, we can see the project name, there's an avatar, we can see who owns the project and the date the project was created. Using these hyperlinks at the top, we can control the number of projects that we see below. Currently, we are seeing all the projects. I'm going to choose Owned by Me. Now that's anticlimactic because you can see right here, I own all of these projects. Let's go to Shared with Me. This will show me projects that are owned by others that I've been invited to. Currently, we don't have any. Let's jump over to Archived. This will show us projects that have been removed for archival reasons. As you can see, I have three projects. Now, just because a project has been archived doesn't mean it's gone forever. If I hover over a project, I can come down and choose Restore to restore it. Or if I click Delete, then that project would be gone forever. Let's come back to All. Next, we'll talk about the Pinned option. This allows us to simplify the number of projects that we see below. For instance, let's say that I am working on the Sycamore Road Connection project, and I'll be working on this exclusively for the next couple weeks. That's the only project I'd like to see in this list. Well, if I go to the other projects, I can click this pin icon to unpin it. I'll come down and I will unpin these others. We'll unpin all of them except for Sycamore Road Connection. At this point, I'll come up and click Pin, and now you can see Sycamore Road Connection is the only project we see in this list. So using Pinned, I can have a more targeted list of projects. I'm going to put things back the way they were. I'll choose All, and then I will click to repin these other projects. Over to the right is an activity panel. Using this, I can view the goings-on in my project hub. As you can see, there have been several files uploaded recently. Right here, we can see the file name. We can see who uploaded the file and to what project that file was uploaded. I can also see the date. Let's drag this up. Looks like an image has been uploaded. There was a live meeting recently. And then most recently, a PDF was uploaded to the Sycamore Road Connection project. At the top right of the interface is a series of icons. This one on the left is a search field. I can use this to search the entire hub. For instance, maybe I'm looking for Navisworks files. I'm going to type NWD. That text string represents the file extension. You can see that two files were found. One is in the Terrell Road extension project and the other is in State Route 5 Cloverleaf. Now, each of these listings represents a hyperlink that I can click to view that file. Now that I've got the proposed underground utilities file open, you can see there's a breadcrumb trail here at the top of the screen that shows me how to get back. Home represents the home screen where we just were. Here's the project name. Here's the folder where that NWD file is located. And then this is the actual Navisworks file. To go back to the main screen, I'll choose home. Now, when it comes to the search field, it's important to note that the search applies to the entire hub, and there is a limit to the number of files that we can see in the list. As an example, I'm going to type DWF. Now, I have several DWFs in these projects, but you can see that only five of them show up in this list. Knowing that, you'll want to make sure that your text strings are targeted to have the most valuable results. I'm going to backspace this out, and we'll take a look at this next icon. This one shows us finished jobs. In this list, you can see that I have downloaded a couple of folders in the recent past, and both of them were successful. I could clear this list if I want to. Coming over to the right, we can see a list of alerts. This is another means of notifying me of things that have gone on in the hub. Here I can see a meeting was scheduled, a file was uploaded. If I drag this down, we can see that someone has accepted an invitation to one of my projects. Note the additional options below. I can view all alerts or mark all as red. Moving to the right, we have a help icon. I can use this to view the BIM360 team help documentation. I can also visit the forums or the community to ask product-specific questions. Since this application is constantly evolving, there's also a what's new area where I can find out any additions that have been made to the program. Likewise, I can use this Show Walkthrough option to take a guided tour of the interface. Finally, I'm going to click my avatar in the upper right corner. Using this menu, I can view my Autodesk account. I can adjust BIM 360 team settings that are applicable to me. And since I'm an admin on this hub, 
I can use the admin option to adjust the properties of the hub itself. To return to the main screen, I will click the BIM 360 team icon. Now that we're familiar with the BIM 360 team interface, we are ready to create our first project, and we'll do that in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.